Hello. I will be right up. Now, what can I do for you? Alexander is carrying a rare book from the bookworm. The words in the binding are very faint. The something something riddle book. I found this rare book, and I thought of your offer. Very interesting. It is a wonderful riddle book. Riddles are much more marketable than spells these days. I guess people believe more in mirth than in magic. Here is the spell book you wanted, and a fair trade it is, I must say. Enjoy it. I certainly hope so. We shall see how rusty my spell casting truly is. Alexander is carrying a book from the bookshop. The cover says, Ye Old Spell Book. The pawn shop window has the words curios and antiques painted on it. What an interesting looking shop. Good day, Prince Alexander. Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. I believe I'll take the tinderbox. Very good, Prince Alex. Enjoy your tinderbox and bring it back any time. Thank you. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. There appears to be something etched into the face of the cliff. Alexander decides to get closer. Blocks of stone erupt from the granite cliffs. Alexander stares with wonder. That's quite a way to welcome a guest, if indeed it is a welcome. Oh no, Alexander loses his balance. Whoa! 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 Ow! Oh, hey! Oh no, Alexander loses his balance. Whoa! 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 Ow! Oh, hey! Oh no, 
Alexander loses his balance. Whoa! 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 Hey, quit making me fall. Alexander is standing on top of a small granite step which sticks out of a sheer wall of cliffs, and it's a long way down. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs.
Alexander finds himself finally at the top of the cliffs. Exhausted, he steps over the lip of the plateau and stands. Why do you make such an effort to climb the cliffs, young man? The winged ones who live on this island have the power of flight. You could have it too, if you'd only eat a berry from this magical flying nightshade bush. See? The sweet berries will make you float like a petal on the wind. Try some. Blackberries grow only at the top of the bush, as though straining towards the sun. But who are you, matron? Who cares? Uh, I, I mean, I am only a poor old woman who wishes you well, handsome stranger. Think of me as your grandmama, if you like. The old woman has a pleasant grandmotherly face, but something about her makes Alexander uneasy. How can this plant give the power of flight? Listen, son, I'll be happy to answer any questions you like, but only if you at least taste these delicious berries. Come, stranger, trust me. Think of what I'm offering you. Young man, you offend me. I try to help you and you insist on being rude. Then stay tied to the ground like a load of lead. See if I care. You, 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 human. How odd. The old woman just disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Perhaps those berries are even more powerful than she led Alexander to believe. Huge doors are set into the solid rock of the mountain. In the distance, Alexander can see the peak of a majestic mountain rising into the clouds. There's a natural opening in the rock near the nightshade bush. Alexander crawls through the small opening in the rock. Alexander finds himself in a dark cave. Alexander can't see much of anything in the dark cave. Hello? Is anyone here? There's no response from the darkness. Alexander takes the candle from his tinderbox and uses the flint in the box to light it. On the wall opposite the cliffs is the vague outline of another opening in the rock. Alexander crawls through the opening in the rock. The lighting in this part of the cave is better. Alexander extinguishes the candle's flame and places it back in his pack. Other than a few bats, there doesn't seem to be anyone in the cave to converse with. A natural window-like opening in the rock provides a view to the outside world. A peppermint plant grows on the window's ledge. Alexander takes a few leaves from the plant. As he does so, a strong smell of peppermint is released. Ah! A small opening in the rock provides a passage back to the first room of the cave.
Alexander crawls back into the first room of the cave. Alexander can't see a thing. In the dark cave, Alexander can barely make out the small opening in the rock that provides passage back to the top of the cliffs. Alexander crawls back through the passage to the top of the cliffs. Look, an intruder! Hold! How did you get up here, human? I climbed the cliffs. That is not possible. No one has solved the cliffs of logic in several centuries. And if the cliffs were to be solved, it would certainly not be by a human. I... I didn't mean to trespass. I only wanted to visit this beautiful island. No visitors have been welcome on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain in years. Not since the Red and White Queens had spies in the guise of friendly visitors steal our island's sacred golden fleece. But we will not display such foolish trust again. You will have to answer to Lord Azure and Lady Ariel. They will determine what will be done with you. I can assure you, it will not be pleasant. With what trickery did you master the Cliffs of Logic and reach the city of the Winged Ones? Only the magic of clear thought, my lord. I meant no harm. The Cliffs of Logic? It is the sacred oracle's prophecy, Azur. Yes, Ariel. Hmm. It is lucky for you, human, that climbing the Cliffs of Logic is part of a prophecy that I cannot ignore. We have just been ordered by Wazir Al-Hazred himself to dispose of any strangers that might land on our fair isle. But the prophecy would have a different fate befall you. The prophecy predicts that whosoever climbs the Cliffs of Logic will defeat the Minotaur. The Minotaur has violated our sacred catacombs and eats our young in sacrifice. Our own daughter, Lady Celeste, was taken there only this morning as his most recently demanded offering. A dilemma, then. Whom shall I obey in regards to your fate, the Oracle or the Crown? But since Al-Hazred did not dictate how I was to dispose of intruders, and since you cannot possibly survive the catacombs, your imprisonment there should serve both purposes quite admirably. I will not resist you in this, my lord. I shall do my best to save your daughter. Hmm. First, I must tell you that the catacombs are a labyrinth of rooms, a place of exceeding danger. You will need many tools and clear wits to survive it. I am ready. Very well. My guards will take you there now. You seem courageous enough, but the catacombs will determine how brave you really are. Why did you tell Lord Azure you were ready and willing to face the catacombs? No one is ever ready, and only a fool could be willing. And you are far wiser, I suppose, to leave a maiden to die? To not fight this plague on your own people? Bravery and suicide are two different things, human. You will have a chance to renounce your choice soon enough, when you lay trembling under the Minotaur's hooves. We shall see. Thanks for the escort. We only escort you to your death. May the fates make it quick so that you do not have to scream long. The catacomb's entrance door is locked from the outside by the winged one's guards. It seems that leaving the catacombs by that door is not an option. 
The walls of the catacombs are made of massive stone tiles. That's the north wall of the room. Niches in the wall form stone burial beds. Ancient bones lie crumbling on the unyielding rock. The remains of several unfortunate souls haunt the room. These bones seem more recent than the ancient catacomb bones that Alexander has seen so far. Perhaps they were victims of the Minotaur, or perhaps they died while wandering lost in the maze. Three of the skeletons are completely intact. A lone skull lies on the ground among the skeletons. Where the skull came from, is a mystery, since the other remains seem to have their skulls intact. Alexander picks up the skull. That tile bears an engraving of a crown. Alexander is standing in a room with a tiled floor. Except for the tiles directly in front of the doors, each tile bears an engraving. Alexander has the feeling that the unique floor isn't merely decorative. Ah, you were a human only and not the monster himself. I heard you coming and thought you were the beast. Did my father send you here to save me? Why, yes he did, but how did you... Hush, there is no time. I think I have discovered the Minotaur's secret exit from the catacombs. Follow me and we'll both be saved. There you are. Why do you not follow me? Do you wish for death by the Minotaur? Hurry, we can tarry no longer. So, here you still are. You are a coward and a fool. I leave you to your fate.
an old wooden shield hangs on the wall. Alexander takes the shield from the wall. Niches in the wall form stone burial beds. Ancient bones lie crumbling on the unyielding rock. Alexander notices that this skeleton has old coins over its eyes. Alexander finds two coins on the skeleton's eyes. He takes the old coins. The doors have sealed Alexander inside, and the ceiling is coming down. The gears are working furiously to lower the ceiling. Their great cogs interlock perfectly. In a desperate move, Alexander throws a brick into the grinding gears. The brick is caught between two cogs. The gears shriek and shudder. The mechanism grinds to a halt. The ceiling is stuck. The trap is sprung. Stay up, ceiling. Good ceiling. Alexander hears the distant sounds of a wild animal somewhere in the maze of rooms. Alexander seems to have fallen to a lower level of the catacombs. Wherever he is, the place sure is dark. Alexander can't even see his hand in front of his face. Alexander takes the candle from his tinder box and uses the flint in the box to light it. Aha! So that's why it's dark in here. A torch is out. 
Alexander lights the extinguished torch and puts his tinderbox away. Alexander hears the sound of a wild beast again, this time so loud that the creature itself seems to be in the same room with him. The noises are coming from the other side of the east wall. Alexander examines the wall closely, but sees only a solid rock wall. The hole in the wall has four legs and a curly tail. He's all limbs with only a hole for a body. But that doesn't make him any less whole. Alexander puts the hole in the wall on the east wall. The hole in the wall trembles slightly with dread at the clammy feeling of the stones. Alexander peers through the hole in the wall and sees just another room in the catacombs. Aha! Not just another room at all. So that's why Alexander couldn't find the Minotaur's lair. At least Alexander now knows the lair exists somewhere in the maze on the other side of this wall. While Alexander contemplates what he's just seen, the hole in the wall, frightened by the Minotaur, makes a run for it. Alexander hopes the little creature finds its way home to the Isle of Wonder. Alexander hears a low growling, so faint as to seem born of his fired imagination rather than of any living creature. A 
very beautiful, very dusty tapestry hangs on the wall. Hmm, this tapestry looks familiar. Now let's see. I don't feel anything. Aha! A hidden latch. Alexander triggers the little latch. A secret door rolls open. The secret door to the Minotaur's lair is open. Your struggles are useless. It's the Minotaur, and he's struggling with a winged one's girl. She must be Lady Celeste. The Minotaur is a huge, monstrous beast with cloven hooves and the head of a bull. A monstrous altar towers in one corner of the room. Alexander shudders with revulsion at the thought of the rituals performed at that sacrificial table. Beautiful winged one girl is struggling for her life against the Minotaur. A pit has caved in the floor in one corner of the Minotaur's lair. Flames rise from the pit as though from the throat of a dragon trapped in the earth. The fire makes the lair unbearably hot. Excuse me. I demand the release of that maiden this instant, you fiend. Lady Celeste looks wildly around the room for the source of the strange voice and spots Alexander. You there, human! Help me! Help! <sighs> Who dares enter my lair? I ask you to release your captive or suffer the consequences. Never you die, human. As the Minotaur advances in attack, Alexander slowly backs away. Until he can back away no more. Now where to, little man? Alexander, his back inches from the fiery pit, tempts the Minotaur with the Red Queen's scarf. Look here, you bully! Nice, bright red. Red. Now you die! The Minotaur drops from sight amidst the consuming flames. Slowly, his scream fades as well. Have you been harmed, Lady Celeste? Are you all right? No, I am not all right. I assume you do not intend to leave me tied up on this vile monstrosity. Uh, of course not. Sorry, let's see. If you'll give me a moment, I'll have these untied in no time. Long. Look, I wear a small dagger just inside my belt. It should be enough to cut the rope. Oh, all right. I, I've got it, Lady Celeste. Here we go. Thank you. You may keep the dagger as a gift for saving my life. That's very generous. Forget it. Do you mind if we just get out of here now? The Winged One's guards, bored with the pointless waiting, are startled by the sound of rock moving against rock. Lady Celeste, bide thee well. I'm quite well, thanks to the bravery of a mere human. So much for your superior intellect. Yes, me lady. Now bring him along. I'm going home. Ah! 
I see you have proven yourself the hero of the prophecy. Well, I am expected to thank you for saving my daughter's life. So I thank you. I am obliged to thank you for the restoration of our sacred catacombs. It means much to our people. We have already begun the process of clearing the deadly traps from its rooms. It is also my duty to grant you a visit with the Oracle. So this I do. I will grant you the freedom to leave here unharmed, despite my orders to the contrary from the Crown. But there, my obligations to you end. I have no love for Alhazred, but he is my liege, and if Princess Kasima trusts him and wishes to wed him, my guards will take you to the Oracle now. When your time with her is through, I want you to leave the City of the Winged Ones and never return. I don't know who you are or what you want here, but I will not disobey my crown further. I thank you, Lord Azur. I will respect your wishes. Hail to thee, great oracle. Lord Azur sends you this wingless mail. It appears that he solved the cliffs of logic and... Defeated the Minotaur in his lair. So I have seen. So this is the one that haunts my pool of late. Welcome, young seeker. What knowledge do you desire? Princess Kasima, whatever you can tell me, great oracle. Ah, of course, the princess. That explains my images. Let us see what we can see. I see a maiden, lovely and pure, but surrounded by evil. She is a rose set amidst bitter thorns. It is her fate to be the pawn of dark powers, and yours to try to redeem her. How? How do I redeem her? Fate is not like the cut of a blade, young one, but rather like the myriad of paths formed when a hammer cracks ice. I will tell you what I can, but what will actually come to pass is up to you. I see that any attempt to reach the girl will force you into battle, a struggle against a dark force. If you lose, your life will be forfeit. Who must I fight? A great darkness surrounds your adversary, preventing me from seeing clearly. I can only make out the shape of a black cloak. But before this final struggle, I see an infiltration, a dangerous game of hide-and-seek in corridors filled with enemies. The risks are high, but it is the only way to reach the one you seek. There is more than one way into this place. Your choice will dictate much. What else do you see, mighty oracle? Oh! Oh, such pain. I see two restless spirits crying out for revenge. These shades could help you destroy the Dark Force if they were to be brought back from their spiritual form. Yet this is only one possible path to your destiny. I'm afraid this is getting beyond me. I know very little about the afterlife. I can only advise getting counsel from the druids. Be warned. The druids are reclusive and dangerous. They might aid you, or they might destroy you. Like their island, the druids' nature is hidden in the mists. There is nothing more I can do for you, except to give you this. It is water from the sacred pool. That and my blessing go with you. Thank you, great oracle.
Alexander pulls out his magic map. Another island has appeared on the magic map. Alexander wonders if it has anything to do with the oracle's reference to the druids. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Good day, Prince Alexander. Haven't I seen you somewhere before, sir? No! But I'm quite sure. Perhaps on some cliffs? No! Isle of the Beast? No! Darkseid? No! Leave me alone! Not very friendly, is he? How fare you, good merchant? A man my age can only thank the heavens for continued strength, young sire. Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. I think I'd like the painter's brush. Very good, Prince Alex. The painter's brush it is. May your painting go well. Feel free to bring back the brush at any time. Thank you. Jalo, my friend, is the wedding still moving forward at the castle? Prince Alex, he gads, yes, that confounded wedding has a whole castle a bustle. Look, I didn't come here to talk about that, though. I came to warn you. Warn me? About what? Isn't the wedding bad enough? No, listen. The Wazir knows that you're here, Alexander. He's posted extra guards, and he's telling them about a foreign saboteur. Who else could he mean but you? The Wazir's genie must have learned of your presence in the land, Prince Alex. <laughs> I don't know how, but he must have. I haven't exactly been discreet, I'm afraid. Alexander, this is serious. El Hazred will never let you get close to Kasima now. He stumbled the castle guard, probably to make sure you keep out. Dead Zooks! Oh, it's too bad there isn't some way to convince Al Hazred that you've left the island, or so even died. If he thought you were out of the way, you might be able to get close enough to... Hmm, what an interesting thought. Tell me more about this genie. The genie's name is Shamir Shamazo. Al Hazred brought Shamir with him when he came to this kingdom. Shamir probably won't directly threaten you, but that doesn't mean he isn't dangerous. He can be a terrible trickster and an ingenious spy. <sighs> it's too bad we can't get our hands on Shamir's lamp. If we had that lamp, Alhazred and all of our problems would be solved. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a fine thing? You would wish to be master of such a wicked creature? Oh, Shamir isn't necessarily evil. Genies never are, you know. They only reflect their owner's heart, for good or ill. <laughs> Al Hazred is hardly a shining example for an impressionable genie. Hmm. So how do you propose we go about getting Shamir's lamp? What? Oh, Prince Alex, I was only dreaming. I mean, the lamp is heavily guarded. It would be easier to steal Al Hazred's own trousers while he's wearing them than it would be to get that lamp. But surely a clown's hands are quick and agile. Well, yes, they are, as uh, a matter of fact. But then the theft would be detected almost immediately. And then... 
my poor neck. If the theft were detected. Oh, I see. Yes, well, there might be a slim chance, but only that. If you could find a replica of the genie's lamp, uh, an exact replica, I might be able to make the swap. I alone might get close enough. But I couldn't tell you what to look for. I caught a glimpse of it only once. I would know it if I saw it again, but to say I, I cannot. Well, I'll just have to see what I can do. Good luck to you then, Prince Alex. I uh, really must be going back to the castle. I don't think I'll be able to come back here. If we were spied on, well, it's too high a risk. I hope you understand. If I see Kasima, I'll tell her I saw you. If you do ever make it to the castle, look me up. And do be careful, friend. I will. Goodbye, Jalo. Thanks for all your help. Jello? Greetings, my fine furred friends. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. A stone archer sits atop the lintel of the gate like a silent guardian. His stone bow is tightly drawn and fitted with a single stone arrow. Alexander decides to pass through the gate, preparing the shield just in case. The magic arrow completely shatters the shield. Good thing the arrow didn't hit Alexander. The archer's bow is empty, his lone arrow spent. Sorry about that arrow, friend. The stone archer looks resigned and does not reply. A delicate gazebo made of white painted pine and overgrown with rose vines leads north into what appears from here to be a garden. Flowering rose hedges grow on either side of the path winding north. Alexander walks forward to step onto the gazebo. 
but the rose hedges on either side of the path, sensing an intruder's presence, reach out their vines and blend together. The path is blocked. The hedge over the path is covered with thorns, and its vines are thick and strong. Alexander cannot part the hedge with his hands. Alexander takes a magnificent white rose from the rose hedges. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. 